Hey, t and fans. It's your editor-in-chief, Nicole Stewart, here today. And I have the amazing Melissa. Melissa, please introduce yourself to the audience. Hi, everyone. This is Melissa Mitchell, your favorite abstract artist and, and taking over the world with color. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Now, your artwork, it just really speaks and moves me in a way that's just so beautiful. Um, just the way that you use and incorporate color into your work and your head wraps, I just think it's just, it's just so inspiring. What really um, led you to start using your artwork as a platform, and how did you get yourself out there and get into doing it? Um, I believe I believe art was always innate inside of me. Um, I, I've always been the colorful girl out of the group. If everybody says we're wearing all black, I'll find a way to, to bring in yellow, pink, or orange. Um, so my personality has always been very colorful, but I didn't really actually pick up a paintbrush to attempt a career until 2014. Um, I always tell the story about how I was home bored during the snowstorm and just needed something to fill time, um, and I just put something on social media, and people started to fall in love with it. These are little, literally just my beginnings of just doodling and doing some fun little designs, and then I ended up selling one or two pieces, and I said, wow, this might actually be a business. And so from that point on, I began to market myself as a motivated, uh, motivational artist, artist, and so... Um, I just made a very unique spin on being an artist. I didn't just want to create stuff to sell it. I wanted to actually be a part of people's lives and motivate them to follow their dreams. And so I took it a step further and said, you know, wow, I wonder if I could wear my art. And that's when I decided to create my own line of head wraps because um, really I don't like to do my hair half the time, and I'm always rushed between shows. So the head wraps became an extension of my display of artwork. And I decided to, again, share that with the world as well. And I launched my head wrap line at the end of 2016, um, debuted at Florida a ms Homecoming, and I was out in a day and a half. So I knew that I was on to something. And I'm now on my sixth round of orders um, to go out nationwide. So it, it's gone from an idea, um, a way to, to kill time, to now a full-fledged career and lifestyle. So just tell some of the people, what were some of the things you were doing before you started doing art? Um, what, what was your career before art? Um, I still have a career, actually. I am in IT um, for the for the government, so I work on computers during the daytime, very analytical work. I'm a business analyst, and um, I work on that. And I went to school for public relations and graphic design, so I've always had a keen eye for creating um, you know, marketing things, knowing what to say, how to say it, and when to say it. So um, all of my skill sets have been a part of my career. So when it comes down to graphic design, I've had to design things on a computer. When it comes down to finding a way to market myself and to reach out to different reps, I know how to formulate a, a press release or a letter. Um, and when it comes to just being my own marketing tool, I know how to do that as well. So my background has definitely helped me to propel to higher heights. So I am my own publicist. I have my own graphic designer. I am my own marketer. Um, anything that I need, I can dig deep to either learn or to pull from my own skill set. Now, that that's wonderful that you have the ability to be the jack of all trades when it comes to you and your business. Um, where do you feel like that energy and that motivation to continue to keep learning and growing comes from? Um, it's, it's, I don't know if there's a quote that talks about you're only better as you only, you're only, um, greater than you were yesterday. And I feel like I just want to top what I've been able to accomplish. I, 2016 was a major year for me. Um, and as great as it was, I feel like there's so much more to go until I can walk into a room. And I don't have to introduce myself. That's why I know I've made it. Um, and it's happened a couple of times, but I want to go into the room, um, that has all of my favorite artists all of my favorite singers, all of my favorite idols that some would say, um, and they would already know who I am before I even get to the room. So I'm just all about being remembered and leaving a great mark on the earth. And so that that's my biggest goal is that I keep going because, you know, you, you can only climb higher and higher. The, the ladder that I'm climbing has no end. So I'll, it'll end when it's time for me to leave this earth. So it, it, when I have no more ideas left and nothing else left inside of me, then I'll know that I've done my job. Amazing. Now, just getting back to your um, your artwork and your headpieces, um, they're very Afrocentric and they have a very like um, 
black pride kind of feel to them. What inspires you to go that route with your art and your hair wrap? Um, I wouldn't even say it's black pride. I think that it's um, it's more culturally inspired um, because when I became a painter or an artist, I had no idea what I wanted to do, no idea where I wanted to go with it. But because I have such rich heritage, um, Caribbean heritage, and I'm now getting my DNA tested to see what tribe that I'm actually from, I think that it just it evolved to that. But I wasn't even trying to be, you know, um, an African artist, um, so would speak. But when um, I get pictures from people that travel to different South American countries, one of my friends visited somewhere, a, a, a tribe in Africa, that she thought it looked reminiscent of my work. I think that we all are already who we're supposed to be and who we already were. And so it's almost like an ancestral uh, fruition, things coming from the past and now making their way to canvas. So I just think it's in my bloodline. Um, it was one of those things that, oh, I want to be this kind of artist. I think it just became, I just became that kind of artist. And because I'm so into colors and vibrant things like that, it looks so reminiscent of my Caribbean culture, which is the Bahamas. Um, and I've also studied the Adele tribe out of uh, South Africa. So I'm learning that we are already um, who we once were. And so our ancestors, we're doing these things. With things that we do today are not new to, to the universe. Um, and so I just think I'm just, I'm just a culmination of who I, who I once were, you know, um, back when we were, when we first came to the States or even when we were back in Africa. That's beautiful, Melissa. That's, that's awesome. What um, advice do you have for young entrepreneurs and people out there that's starting their own business to really get started and get the ball rolling? Um, I, I'm, I'm, big, I'm big on I'm quoting Nike. You have to just do it. A lot of people are waiting for the perfect business plan or for the perfect opportunity or the perfect partner. A lot of times you almost have to build a plane while you're flying. Um, you really have to stop uh, procrastinating on what you want to do. Set some very realistic goals and even some goals that seem a little more grandiose than they should be um, and just go for it. Um, I believe social media is our greatest tool um, in 2017. You really don't have to do as much legwork as you once did. Do some very uh, strategic um, research on your field. So let's say you want to sell – Let's say you want to sell a certain thing, and so you start looking at all your competitors and saying, wow, where can I fit into this niche? Is my price point high? Is it low? Um, why would somebody want to buy A versus B? And so me being the, the B product, what would make my product stand out more? And so you just kind of craft your, craft your space um, in the market by just doing some keen research. Um, once you do your research, once you understand your market, once you really begin to own who you are, you start putting up those blinders and say, you know what, it doesn't matter um, how successful somebody else has been. There's room for me to win as well. And you just have to understand that what God has given you is unique to you and that there's space for it in the market and in the world and that you have to go for it. A lot of people get discouraged on their journey feeling, oh, wow, there's already somebody selling head rides. Man, there's already somebody selling, um, you know, motivational books. There's no room for me. Um, we live in a um, society that has a lot of disposable income, so somebody would, be, would, would not mind spending a little extra money on a part being on your story. And so don't worry about um, your immediate network purchasing things because many of your number one clients will be outside of who you know. It's always a friend of a friend of a friend. So don't worry about the people that you think are supporting or not supporting you. Um, that's another thing as an entrepreneur. You get discouraged like, man, my own sister ain't buy XYZ. And really your sister, she believes in you, but she just may not want to buy it. But the person that your sister may talk to you about might be your number one customer. So I encourage you to keep going and stop worrying about who signs on for what you're doing because there's a reason why God gave it to you. You have to run towards it. So um, that's my biggest advice is to research, to do, and to get it done. That's right, guys. I couldn't agree with you more, Melissa. That's amazing. So you heard it live on TNE Magazine, guys, Melissa Mitchell. Melissa, please let the people know where they can follow you on social media and where they can purchase your art and your hair wrap. I sure will. Um, my name is Melissa A. Mitchell, and that happens to also be my website, www.melissaamitchell.com, and my Instagram page is ABL Creations, and that's A-B-E-I-L-L-E Creations. Um, and a lot of people ask what ABL means. It means honeybee in French, and Melissa means honeybee in Greek. So that's how I came up with that wonderful uh, international name for my company. 
That's awesome, Melissa. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, guys. Um, make sure if you want to stay up on all the amazing interviews that Teeny Magazine does, that you push that subscribe button and subscribe and follow our YouTube channel and make sure you never miss an interview. And if you want to see more pictures and learn more about Melissa, you will see her in the February issue of TNE Magazine and the link to purchase that issue will be below in the description. So enjoy.